we will go through and explain the use of the ballistic screen. First, we will note that we can quickly view the gun profile to ensure that we are utilizing the right profile as we are calculating our ballistic predictions. <coughs> Everything in this screen has to do with the target and the gun's orientation and the environmental conditions. So everything that is required to make a very accurate uh, prediction for your shot placement is inputted into this screen. First thing that we'll enter is the range. We'll say that we have a target at 1,553 yards, <coughs> followed by the wind speed, which we can say is a five mile an hour wind from nine o'clock. So the direction for wind is the direction that the wind is coming from. For a moving target, we can say we have a target that is moving at 12 miles per hour. Now the direction for the moving target is the direction that the target is moving. So we'll say that that's moving to through the three o'clock position. The reason that uh, we utilize the directions as we do for the wind and the moving target is for wind, it is uh, much easier to be able to fill the direction that the wind is coming from. And for a moving target, it is easier to identify which direction a target is moving. <clears throat> uh, the next piece is the slope angle of the rifle. We'll say we have a slope of 12 degrees up. Had we had a slope of 12 degrees down, we would put negative 12. <coughs> Uh, the next is the current environmental conditions or density altitude. Uh, we can again obtain a density altitude reading from a handheld uh, weather instrument like a Kestrel unit or we can enter the density altitude uh, subscreen to enter the individual temperature, humidity, pressure and so on in order to calculate have it automatically calculate a density altitude reading. <coughs> the next piece is the Coriolis. For the Coriolis, we need a uh, latitude reading. We'll say that this is a 45.3 and a bearing or azimuth. So we'll say we are firing at uh, 350 degrees. The next one is the cant. If you have the rifle uh, canted to the left or the right, we can actually enter a precise value here that would allow you to say, uh, maybe if you needed to shoot below a, a car or from underneath a vehicle, you could orient your gun on its side at 90 degrees and if you note at the top, your elevation and windage setting has uh, accounted for that. <coughs> we'll go ahead and uh, return it to zero because I prefer to just use a bubble level and, and fire my rifle oriented vertically. The next uh, feature is a cold bore. Uh, if I am shooting with a suppressor, then I may have, you know, my first shot out of the suppressor might be maybe a half inch outside of the rest of the group. And, you know, as I test it, I find that that's a, a consistent shift. Then I can put in a cold bore uh, impact shift in here. So let's say that my first shot out of the gun is uh, traditionally a 0.4 uh, mils high. I can uh, account for that and tell it that I need to move down by 0.4. <clears throat> and let's say that uh, it is uh, 0.3, so let's say your cold bore is hitting 0.3 mils to the left, I can enter 0.3 mils, which will put it to the right, and correct that. Now I can 
in entering this information into my scope for that first shot. You know, I can take the elevation setting at the top 14.4 and uh, reduce it by 0.4 down at the bottom, which gives me a 14 uh, mil setting on my scope. Or I can hit the summation button uh, at the bottom and it will automatically add my cold bore uh, setting with the values at the top. Note that it does not change the values at the top. It only notates that at the bottom to prevent from any mistakes um, and forgetting to uh, remove the cold bore on uh, successive shots. So we have entered all of the information uh, necessary into the ballistic calculator and we can uh, use our setting on the top uh, output bar which we can also toggle the left box in that output bar between turret uh, linear which is how many inches of drop uh, clicks the number of clicks on your rifle scope uh, MRAD and MOA or uh, IFE, which is scopes that have uh, inch clicks at 100 yards, and back to turret. So you can see that with the turret error, that I have an elevation setting of 14.4, uh, and I have an MRAD scope, so we can compare that 14.4 with our MRAD setting, which is 14.5. So we have a 0.1 MRAD click difference at 1,550 yards. <clears throat> so we'll go back to turret. Now we can generate a table at the right top corner. So you note that it has the elevation and windage setting and bold. Those uh, account for all of your advanced features and values uh, with exception of the moving target lead. And you can see the lead to the right. Uh, we also show the uh, spin drift for those that are curious to know how much spin drift is accounted for in the bolded wind column. We can now move back and look at the advanced features. So we've, we've entered all of our information in the ballistic screen. We've entered very accurate information in the equipment screen and we can go to the what's on tab and we can see that we have Coriolis is working, density altitude is, is working, uh, field condi conditions are, are working because our, uh, our target environmentals uh, have varied from the zero environmentals. <coughs> we have a full lead status, uh, we have spin drift status, so the full lead is the moving target and we have a st stability factor that automatically calculated with our, our new conditions of 1.97. So if you notice, we can utilize some more advanced features and we'll go back to the ballistic screen and add, first we'll add some uh, multiple winds. So we're gonna activate multiple winds. We're gonna say that our, our first band of wind is five miles an hour and it is coming from two o'clock. And that wind has a, uh, begins at zero yards and ends at uh, 550 yards. We can do uh, one more band or, or two more bands and let's say we have a second band of uh, 10 miles an hour and that is coming from three o'clock and it ends, We can if we only want to have two bands we can say that it ends at uh, 1,553 yards and then not enter the third band or we if we have uh, three bands we can say this goes to uh, say 1150 yards and then we can enter that last band which maybe it is uh, a, a light wind that's coming from uh, six o'clock so we'll do okay as we return to the ballistic screen note that the uh, the previous value that i entered in this screen of five miles an hour is now grayed out when that's grayed out it's letting you know that that value is being ignored so if I go back into the multi-wind screen, I can deactivate multi-wind and come back and you can see that now it is uh, now active again.
So we'll go ahead and, and reactivate multi winds, and then we'll go down and activate the canting feature and say we have a 15 degree cant in our rifle. <clears throat> now let's revisit the uh, what's on tab in the settings screen. We can see now at the top that the canting status is enabled. Um, the At the bottom the multi-wind status is enabled. The hit threshold and regression status are some advanced features that are uh, coming in uh, future releases and the uh, other field conditions tab is uh, a as not necessary so we we don't uh, that won't ever be ne a necessary field and we will have that removed in the future that completes the description and instructions of the ballistic screen